finances are always going to cause us all stress, right? But the more we kind of push all that aside and say like, I'm just not going to look at it. They don't go away. Make your finances a priority. And I'm not really talking about like how much money you make. The more important part of it is the expenditure side, what my outgoing is. I think just making that a priority and knowing that like, hey, if I'm on top of that, I'm going to alleviate a lot of stress in my life. So kind of to make this a little more simplified, and I, this is a question I think I've already asked you, in your, in your mind, can a credit card help fight inflation? Well, I, I don't know that I would necessarily say that it fights inflation, but here's, here's where that strategy that we were just talking about can pay off in, a, in an inflationary rising price environment. If I'm doing the things we talked about, I'm using the credit card like a debit card, well, those rewards that I'm getting back, which by the way, might be cash back yeah. rewards, yeah. right? Well, those are, those are things that I guess we could say in essence are supplementing my income. That's money yeah. coming back to me that is part of just my normal everyday spending. Now, if I'm, I can take that to the extreme and say, hey, I want to earn these rewards. And so I'm going to put everything that I can on my credit card, whether I can afford it or not. That's going to backfire on us in the, in the long run, because yes, I'm earning that, that cash back or those rewards, but I'm going to have to pay for it. And as we've mentioned, rates are going to go up. So it's going to be more expensive in the future to pay that off. That would backfire. If we're, however, if we're on top of it, then I guess we could term that as a little bit of an inflation fighter because the, that normal spending that I'm getting that cash back or those rewards, yeah, that's, uh, it, it's kind of offsetting some of my spending, or we could say it's supplementing our income. Okay. Interesting. Very, very cool. Um, how you, you mentioned cash back, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's one of the men, one of the many rewards we right. can get. Um, how do we maximize that? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, you well, I think what you said is exactly right. There's, there's lots of different types of rewards cards yeah. out there. There are cards that are, that are focused on, you know, travel, uh, types of things uh, tied to certain hotel chains or airlines. There are credit cards like the Mountain America card that has like a wide variety of types of rewards. And then there are things that are specifically cash back. So, so really, I think, I think it really depends on, okay, what first I've got those fundamental under control in my budget. Now what's going to be the most beneficial to me? Is it having cash coming back into, into my uh, budget or is it, you know, do I travel a lot or is this, you know, I'm trying to help, Hey, I've got a goal that we're going to take a family vacation in a year and we're going to, you know, use, uh, use some of our normal spending to earn up some airline tickets. So I think it kind of depends there. It's matching your wants and your lifestyles with the, with what the card has to, has to offer. So okay. whether that's cash back or travel rewards or any other types of rewards, I think then to maximize that, um, is putting your normal spending on that. And then, and then, you know, the other thing too, Kristalina is that is watching for promotional times because a lot of times, well, Mountain America, for example, we're, we're right now in uh, double points, right? Right. So maybe these are things that I was going to spend anyway. Now's a good time to put that on my credit card because I'm going to uh, maximize the amount of rewards or the amount of cash that I'm going to earn. So, you know, Th those would be other things that I would say is watch for times when cards have promotional periods, double rewards. Hey, that's a great time to be, be doing that. Or maybe I was already planning on making a large purchase and I've got that money set aside. Well, that's a great thing to put on your credit card, earn those double points. And I've got the cash already aside, set aside to make that payment. Okay. I love that. Well, and so tell me too, what are some other things that I need to look for maybe when I'm looking at getting a new credit card. Okay. Okay. We talked a little bit about like the rewards and how those match yeah. your lifestyle, right? Um, the other things that I think are really good advice to look is to really understand what that card's costs are. Okay. Does it have an annual fee with it? Many cards don't have annual fees, but a lot of them do, right? And is what I'm getting for that, is that worth that annual fee and making that, uh, making that determination. Okay. That's, that's just one example of understanding the fees. The other thing is looking at interest rates. Now, if I'm, if I'm doing that strategy that we talked about and I'm using it like a debit card and I've always got the money, well, in those cases, interest rate don't, doesn't matter as much because I'm never going to pay the interest. But right. I also may run into times where I do carry a balance and then the interest matters a lot. 
So um, a lot of times we see things like introductory rates and a lot of times they're really, really low and they look really enticing. Yeah, 0%. 0%, yeah, you know, 1.99% or, yeah. or whatever and things like that. Yeah. And those are, those are legit, but that's not what the card rate really is. That's what the introductory rate is for a period of time. So that's one thing that I would be, uh, make sure that we're very aware of. How long is that introductory period? What are the uh, conditions under which that introductory period can be terminated? For example, a lot of credit cards, like the 0% for you know six months, if you're a day late on a payment, that might that goes away and it goes yeah. to what the normal rate is. And what is that normal rate and understanding what that normal rate is? Because regardless of what the introductory period is and how long it is, and if I do every, meet every condition and keep that, eventually that's going to come out of that introductory period. And yeah. I need to know what, what I'm really signing up for. What that is. Okay. Interesting. Anything else we need to watch for? Yeah. Well, I think those, I, I think those are the main things. Look okay. at fees, look at the, what, what the rewards are. Does that match? And look at what the, what the rates are. Okay. I, I, th those would be the three main things that I think you, you need to pay attention to. Okay. And now, then the fees, annual fees, late fees, over limit fees, cash advance fees. There's a, there's a whole uh, category of fees that can fall under that and make sure we know what those are. And so that I'm, I'm using it in the right way to hopefully avoid those fees. But if they're, if they're fees for things that I'm going to use the card for, I'm going to use it because I, I I'm going to transfer a balance and that's going to be considered a cash uh, advance. I may have a fee on that and know what that is. Know what that is. Okay. Very, very cool. Well, and I think that we should be paying attention to our statements anyway. People don't really do that either, but that's, that's a place where you find out if you've had fraudulent charges and things like that too, is paying attention to your statement. So there's, there's your rate and there's, there's other benefits too, to making sure that we're watching that uh, credit card statement. Okay. So <laughs> when we, when it comes down to all of this, right, does this mean I just need to cut out all the things that I, <laughs> I love and enjoy because gas and food and all, it's, I, everything's more expensive. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like that. Yeah, it, it does a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that, I think that it does bring back those things. What is, what are the things that I need and what are the things that I want? I, I don't, I don't ever think that's never my philosophy is like, don't do anything fun. You know, let's, let's cut out all fun out of life. Yeah. No, I don't think that's, I don't think that's ever a, a good strategy because, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like my diet example earlier. If I say like, no, I can never have a donut again. Well, you know, now I'm probably taking all the joy out of, out of life. Yes. Maybe and then you're so focused on that donut. That's all you want, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't eat the whole dozen of Krispy Kremes, you know, when I, when I, when I get them, but I think it's the same type of concept here. Okay. Well, gas is more expensive. My groceries are more expensive. That's taking a larger chunk of my budget. I need to know that. And I need to be aware of that and say, like, okay, now what are the things that I, that I want to do? Have I taken care of my needs first? Now, what are my thing? What's left over that I can use for those things that I want? I think that it's true that we can't just say I'll just keep spending the same way that I've always spent and buying the same number of clothes and taking the same number of trips and everything, because yeah, because those those necessities have increased in price. So no, I don't I don't ever think that we say we we cut those out, but we have to we have to adjust our our yeah. budget accordingly and say well now there's there's more of my budget that's going towards the needs. And so maybe I've got a little less that's going towards the wants, but so maybe it's just a matter of prioritizing what those, what those wants are. You mentioned when it comes to credit cards and finding a new one here, you mm -hmm. know, all those strategies, anything else that you would add to that? Well, you know, perhaps I'm a little biased, you know, being employed by Mountain America, but I think, I think credit union cards in general and, and the Mountain America card in particular usually have better terms have better rates, lower fees. And so I, I would always say, I, I would be remiss if I was saying, don't look at a credit union card. I think there are a lot of great options there. And the Mountain America card, obviously, I think stacks up to any of them. Love it. Love it. Um, another question I have for you, kind of coming off where we were talking about, you know, using loans, credit, all the things as a tool. Uh -huh. um, it seems like in the world out there. I don't know that we can even say our industry because I feel like so many other industries are getting in on mm -hmm. on lending, right? Right. right. Um, an article I read and, you know, so many other things when I'm shopping online. Well, I should just say on my phone, right? It's like, <laughs> oh, don't pay the full price now. You know, do mm. four payments of this, this, and this. Right. I'm 
I'm sure that those are being widely used because, it, yeah. look, I mean, when I want to buy my pair of cowboy boots for the rodeo season coming <laughs> up, right? If I only have to pay $20 four times instead of, you know, right the full amount at once, I want to do that. What are your thoughts on that? Is this, as a society, a good thing? Is it just another tool for us? Do we need to better understand it? What are yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, better understand it. Yes, and and okay. and we said uh, another tool. That's real. That's really what I think of that. Is is it's okay. just another. It's just another tool. It's a little bit like the old, you know, going way back to like our parents and grandparents, like the old layaway. Layaway. Yeah, yes, that's, absolutely. That's, that's really what it is, right? Okay. I'll, I'll make some payments on that. The only, the only difference in today's world is, you know, unlike the old Kmart that the. Uh, the big wheel or whatever stayed <laughs> stayed at Kmart until our parents paid it off. Now you get the cowboy boots right now and you pay later. Right? Yes. The same concept. Yeah. So I th- I think with that now, a lot of times it is exactly like you said. It's four payments of of twenty dollars and I pay zero interest. And as long as I'm staying within what the what the parameters of that particular buy now pay later program are, then that is that is legitimate. Okay. But just like anything else, I think we can always get ourselves in trouble if we're obligating too much of our of our future income. Just like anything else, I think that we can get in trouble saying like, oh, I'll just buy that now and I'll pay later. And I'll buy this now and I'll pay later. And I'll buy that now and I'll pay later. Before we know it, now we have, you know, all of these payments that we've obligated ourselves to make for the, you know, for the next months, you know, to come. Yeah. So just like anything else, knowing like, okay, yeah, I can make, I can make $20 payments four times. And I've got that in my budget. I know what my budget is and I can, I can handle that. Great. Go okay. for it. I think it's a, it's a great tool, but we can also get ourselves in trouble with that just like any other financial tool. Okay. Okay. So just being mindful of that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we all know, I, and I shouldn't say obviously, because as Americans, we're, we know we're really bad when it comes to debt, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of yeah. stats out there that we can look at and say, oh man, we tend to maybe live outside of that budget. Mm-hmm. Um. Are there ways to get out of debt that um, maybe we haven't thought about other than, you know, those principles that we've already talked about of live within, live within the constraints of your budget? Right, right. Well, yeah, I think that's that's probably a lot of people are like, well, that's great advice, but I'm already in debt. Yes, exactly. What what do I, what do I do with that? Well, there's, there's, there's a lot we could, we could spend, you know, another hour and a half talking about. Yeah. Debt elimination strategies, but just just a couple of thoughts, especially with credit card debt. Um, I think we mentioned earlier, like the concept of a balance transfer. Yes, right. And yeah. those are those are options that a lot of credit cards have. That could be one of the options. If I've got credit card debt that's at say a much higher interest rate, and here's another credit card that has either a very low introductory rate that I can take advantage of during that time, or it's got just a better rate. You know, it's a friendlier rate. I can take that balance from those high rate and put them onto a lower rate card Mm -hmm. and then take advantage of now, if I, if I lower my payment on those, then I really haven't done anything, but if I keep making the same payments and now I'm paying less interest, I'm paying that down faster. Okay. So that's, so that's one thought. Another thought is maybe there are consolidation loans, right? Maybe I take my credit card debt and it might make sense. I could put that into one fixed rate. Right, we talked about credit cards being variable rate, but I could put it on a fixed rate, fixed term loan that I know that I'm going to be paying this amount of uh, uh, payment every month, and in sixty months or forty eight months or whatever that term is, that that debt's going to be gone. That's another strategy. Okay. But again, if I do that, but I don't change my spending habits, and then I rack up the credit cards again, well, now I've got myself in bigger trouble than than I was before. Okay. One one other thought, Christalina, that I that I had, especially in today's environment, if you're a homeowner, chances are you've got equity, right? Uh, yes. That's, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that's that's something. Yeah, because with that inflation, that's something that's happened too. Is that the value of our of our homes have gone up? But I realize not everyone is a homeowner. But if you are a homeowner, you've got equity. You might consider you know things like either re- refinancing your your mortgage and putting some of that debt into that, or taking out say a home equity line of credit using that equity because you're going to get a much better interest rate when it's tied against your home than it is against a credit card. But again, if I'm, that's a, that's a great strategy, but if I, but if I do that and don't change those habits on my credit card, now I've just eaten up the equity in my home 
and now I've got new credit card debt. So that's the that's the caveat that's okay. very important in all of those strategies. Okay. Could I do that as well if I had equity? Let's say I'm not a homeowner, but I have equity in a vehicle. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. those rates are still much, much better, right, than right. a credit card. Right, much better than a, than a credit card. And, okay. And, you know, with the... With the whole uh, supply chain things that we're talking about, new vehicles haven't come on as as uh, quickly as as they have in the past. Yeah. The uh, the outgrowth of that is that used car values are higher than they've ever been. Also, so yeah. you're so you're right. I might I might not be a homeowner, but I've got a vehicle that maybe I don't. I've got I might have equity in that, and that's a that's a very valid strategy too. Because you're right, an auto loan rate is always going to be lower than a credit card yeah. rate. Yeah. And I would say, I mean, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, we can't expect everyday just people that haven't been in finances like yourself for decades to know all the ins and outs of right. this. Right. right. So um, really an invitation maybe to meet with someone and yeah. and just talk through if you feel like you're, you know, over your head in debt. For sure. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's always great advice. I, I, I think, you know, just like anything else there, you know, I don't know everything about everything out there. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't know how to, uh, how to hang drywall very well. You know, it's probably great if I go talk to an expert and either yes. have them show me how to do it or have them do it for me. And I think the same thing comes with, the, with finances. That's part of what the, you know, what Mount America is about is, you know, we, we want to assess and advise and assist our members. And so, yeah, anybody out there, we'd love to talk to anybody who's, who's struggling or, you know. Oh, it's my, what are my best moves? Yeah. Come talk to us. You know, we, that's, that's what we're here for. That, that's, that's our mission. That's what we live for is to help people have better financial futures and achieve their financial dreams. So yeah, come talk to us. Okay. Love that. Um, kind of in closing here, Jade, in this crazy world we live in, I can call it crazy because we've been through a <laughs> pandemic and yeah. all the different things that have happened, right? Not to mention inflation and, and mm -hmm. potential rates increasing. Um, when it comes to our finances, any just one piece of advice that you have for people out there that are just like, man, this is crazy. I guess one thing that I'd say is make it a priority because I think, I, I think that it's, it, it's like, it, it's like any other problem. It's, it's easy to say like, yes, I know I've got this problem, but I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. You know, I just want to push it aside and, and not do anything with it. Your finances have such an impact on on your overall life and your overall well being and your happiness and your stress level and things like that. Finances are always going to cause us all stress, right? That's just that's just kind of part of it. But but the more we kind of push all that aside and say like, you know, yeah, my finances are out of control, but I'm just not going to look at it. Yeah, you know, they don't go away. Yeah, it, usually it it gets worse. So that, maybe that's maybe that's one piece of advice that I have. It's like you know, make make your finances. Uh, priority. I don't think that there's anybody out there that's like, yes, I want my life to revolve around my my finances. Nobody wants that. But the more I think there is a direct correlation to how in control you are of your finances and maybe your overall well-being and your overall happiness. I think there's a direct correlation there. And it doesn't have and it, I'm not really talking about like how much money you make. The the more important part of it, that, I mean that is part of it, right? Sure. Always getting yeah. more income helps obviously. But it's more important the expenditure side, making sure that I'm on top of what my what my outgoing is. That's always going to have a bigger impact than the than the incoming. So, I think just making that a priority and knowing that, like, hey, if I'm on top of that, I'm going to alleviate a lot of stress in my life if I'm if I'm paying attention to my finances. Okay, I love that. Well, we heard it, Jade, from you to eliminate stress in your life. <laughs> visit your budget, and your finances frequently. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Kristalina. Yes. My pleasure. And it's always a pleasure to have you on because I always learn something. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Kristalina, <laughs> every time. Well, and hopefully you all learned something as well. And we will see you all on the next episode of Guiding You Forward. Mm -hmm.